I'm going to walk you through my simple Xdebug setup for local development. I'm a huge fan of local development and I've been doing it for a long time. Recently, I've been using Laravel Valet and we're going to walk through a couple snags that I ran into when I set up Xdebug for Laravel Valet, but this tutorial will work for any local web server that you're using. Okay, so let's cover a few prerequisites. You need Valet or some kind of local web server to work with Xdebug. I'm using Laravel Valet, but you can also use Apache. You'll need the Xdebug module installed. I'm going to go through installing it, troubleshooting it, and verifying the settings. And we're going to cover a few of the key settings that are really important to me to make my setup as minimal as possible. If you're using PHP FPM, you might run into an issue with setting up Xdebug, and we're going to cover that once we jump into PHP Storm. And last, you're going to need an Xdebug client for working with Xdebug. I prefer PHP Storm. It has the best tools for debugging, but you can also use Sublime and Atom. They both have plugins. Even Vim has a plugin, so you can use any Xdebug client that you want to. I'm going to show you PHP Storm because I think it's the best and it's the simplest approach. Even if I'm using Sublime for most of my development, I'll jump over to PHP Storm if I need to use Xdebug. Okay, so first we're going to jump into the terminal and verify a few things on an existing Xdebug install so you can see how that works. The first thing I'm going to show you is php-m. When you type php-m, it will give you a list of modules, and I'm going to filter them by Xdebug just so we can verify that the actual Xdebug module is installed. Using the php-i flag, it's the same thing as running PHP info in the browser. I can filter by Xdebug settings and just verify them if I want to. I can also grep by a specific Xdebug setting if I just want to verify one setting. It makes it quicker to find than seeing the full output. And last, php-ini is a way that you can verify your PHP INI installation, find out where your configuration file is, and also see what additional INI files are set. In this case, you can see that I have an Xdebug INI file that we're going to check out. Okay, so I'm just going to copy the Xdebug.ini file path and open it up in Vim and show you a few of my key settings. Okay, so as you can see, my Xdebug setup is actually pretty simple. I'm installing Xdebug with the Zend extension configuration. This is the path to the Xdebug module that we install via Homebrew. The next line is my favorite setting. If you remember one thing from this video, remember remote auto start. Normally you need to use a specific git or post or cookie variable to start a remote Xdebug session, but remote auto start tries to automatically connect no matter what, even if those variables aren't present. So this makes for a really simple Xdebug setup without a bunch of configuration and I prefer it for local development. Then I can just toggle Xdebug on and off inside of my IDE and use it when I want to and then disable it when I don't. Take note of the remote port. By default, Xdebug's remote port is set to 9000. Unfortunately, if you're using FPM locally, like Laravel Valet does, then 9000 will conflict with FPM. So instead of configuring, reconfiguring FPM, I just changed the remote port in Xdebug and it makes it a lot easier. You might be having trouble actually getting Xdebug to work if you're running Laravel Valet, and this could be one of the hurdles that you're facing. So I always just set it to 9001 just so it's not conflicting, and I know for sure it's not. Next, I use remote connect back, which makes remote host redundant in this case. Basically how it works is if remote connect back is enabled, it will try to use some headers from the HTTP request to connect back to an Xdebug client. And last, I have my Xdebug IDE key set to PHP Storm. I really honestly don't know why I have this setting, but I just do it maybe for tradition's sake. Uh, but X PHP Storm has a setting that we can enter for this, so we might as well. If you need to install the Xdebug module, you can use Homebrew. To find the Xdebug module, you can use Brew's search Xdebug. And as you can see, it'll give you a list back of all the uh, search results. You can see I've already installed Xdebug for PHP 7.1. So if I copy this and then run Brew install, and then this formula, it will install Xdebug for me. I'm actually not going to run it because I already have it installed. So the first thing we're going to do inside of PHP Storm is update our preferences to match some of the Xdebug settings that I showed you in the INI file. To get over to the preferences for Xdebug, you need to use command comma on the Mac or go to the PHP Storm menu and preferences, and then type and filter by Xdebug so you can find those Xdebug settings inside of the configuration. 
Note that the default port is 9000 and we need to tweak this to 9001 to match our setting. And then also just make sure that ignore external connections through unregistered server configurations is unchecked above. Next we're going to filter over to the debug settings, specifically the dbgp proxy settings. If you'll recall the PHP storm IDE key setting that we set up in the INI file, we're going to configure it here and just make sure the port matches in this setting as well. And then finally hit apply and then OK to save the preferences. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is actually set up an xdebug configuration. As I mentioned, I like a minimal setup, but I'm still going to walk you through how to set up your own xdebug configuration if you do want to do it that way. So if you click the drop down in the top right and edit configurations, it'll bring up a run and debug configuration settings. We're going to add a new configuration and you can filter this menu here and we're going to create a PHP web application. Let's just name this configuration app and then we're going to add a web server. So if you click the plus button and let's just name it the name of the host name and then we'll name the host the same thing. You'll notice that debugger is already set to xdebug for us. If you need to, you can check use path mappings if you're using something like Homestead or some other remote server. What you can do here is map your local project files to an absolute path on the server. So you would just match up wherever your files are on, say, Homestead, and then map those locally so that you can see the stack trace inside of Xdebug when you hit a breakpoint. Okay, so we have our basic server set up. So now we're going to actually set a breakpoint on the main welcome route. And then we're going to hit the debug button and we're going to go check and make sure that xdebug is actually working. So if I go ahead and hit the debug button and jump over to the browser, you'll see this xdebug session start get variable. And that's what I was referring to when I was talking about remote auto start. With this configuration, PHP Storm will set this get variable and that's how xdebug knows to actually connect to PHP Storm's client. We're going to cover skipping all of that after I show you a, a little bit of a walkthrough using this setup. So if I jump back over to PHP Storm, you'll notice that it stopped on a Valet script because I'm using Laravel Valet. So if I go ahead and hit play, it's going to jump over to my breakpoint inside of Welcome. So at this point, I know that my setup is actually working. So while I'm stopped at this breakpoint, I can see that I'm running in the context of a Laravel router instance. And I can toggle the properties and see their settings and even copy their values. Okay, so I'm going to hit play again, and this will continue execution and then return the response. Now that xdebug is disconnected, if I want to rerun it, I can click this top button here, rerun app, which will open a new tab in my browser. Then I can just hit play to run through it. So this is basically how you run a debugger with a, with a configuration and then rerun it after it's disconnected. So like I said, I'm not a huge fan of all these configuration settings, so I'm just going to come in here and just delete it. I'm going to show you how to use remote auto start like I was mentioning. Now that our configuration's deleted, there's this little button here that's red right now. It's to start and stop listening for xdebug connections. So because of the way I set up remote auto start, all we have to do is toggle this on and then hit the browser refresh button. And immediately I have an incoming connection from xdebug, so I'm just going to accept this. Hit play from the valet script, and you'll notice that now I'm back in my breakpoint in the welcome route. So this seemed to work. Now if I toggle it back off and jump back over to the browser, if I hit refresh, notice I'm not getting any xdebug connections coming in because we've disconnected it. Sweet, so now we have a really easy way to start up an xdebug connection without any configuration and then turn it off when we don't need it. I love it. Okay, so to wrap up here, I'm just gonna show you a few basic things that I use all the time in PHP Storm. So we're gonna clear out our breakpoint in the welcome route and we're gonna jump over to this hello route. One feature I use all the time is muting breakpoints. If I'm deep into a call stack, sometimes I just need to hit play and then refresh the browser and start over. Maybe I missed something. Um, so one thing you can do is mute breakpoints. So I'm going to set a couple breakpoints inside of this hello route function. I'm going to turn our debugger back on and hit refresh. Okay, so it stops on the valet script, hit play. Now it should stop on the first line of the hello route function. 
At this point, if I click the mute breakpoints and hit play, it's not going to stop on my second breakpoint. If I jump back over to the browser and hit refresh, you'll notice it does stop on the valet script, but if I hit play and my breakpoint is my breakpoints are still muted, then it's not going to stop on them. Muting breakpoints is a really simple feature, but I find I use it all the time and it's really handy. All right, so I'm gonna to toggle it back off and now I'm gonna show you how to use conditional breakpoints. Conditional breakpoints are nice if you're in a for each loop or a deep call stack and you just wanna break on certain conditions. Let's say you have an array of 100 items and you only wanna break on a specific thing. Okay, so to set a conditional breakpoint, you're just gonna right click on a breakpoint. I'm gonna enter name equals Paul. What this will do is look for the name variable and if it's Paul, it will break. If it's false, then it will just skip that breakpoint. So I'm gonna refresh the browser, jump through valet, hit play, and now it should break on this line because name equals Paul. Hit play again to clear it out. And now I'm gonna type in Joe. I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna break on valet. Once I hit play, it's gonna break on the name breakpoint. If I hit play again, it's gonna skip right past the breakpoint because it doesn't equal Paul, just as you'd expect. Now you can toggle the condition on and off by right clicking and if you check it off and check it back on, you'll notice that PHP Storm remembers your last condition. So that's nice if you wanna to toggle something on and off again. Okay, so to turn it off, I'm just gonna uncheck the condition and click done. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how you can evaluate expressions when you're at a breakpoint. If I jump back over to my browser and hit refresh, it's gonna stop on valet again, so let's hit play and go over to our hello route. You'll notice this button up on the top right, evaluate expression. So if I click this, it'll allow me to evaluate PHP code at this breakpoint in the context that I'm in. So I'm gonna type in name and notice since I'm at the breakpoint, it hasn't been set yet. I could type in conditionals like true equals false and just evaluate PHP code on the fly just if there was something that I needed to investigate. So if I jump to my next breakpoint and evaluate name, you'll notice that it equals Joe. If I wanna call view welcome like the welcome route does above, it'll resolve and return a view instance and now you can see I can browse through the, the uh, object that's sent back. Another way that you can evaluate code is through the console. So if I jump over to this console tab and type name, you'll see that equals Joe. I can evaluate true equals false. So the console is another valuable tool you can use to evaluate PHP code. All right, so the last feature I wanna show you is how you can step into a certain function call. If you'll notice, um, we are calling response and then we're chaining a JSON method call onto it. Well, let's say that I didn't really care about what response returned and I just wanted to jump into the JSON method. So if I jump to the breakpoint and then I hit Shift F7, you're gonna notice that I can pick uh, what I jump into. So I'm gonna select JSON and hit enter. It's gonna jump me into the JSON method. At this point, I'll just click uh, step over and then hit play. So that's really simple, but that's if you're doing a lot of chaining, then you can kind of skip some of the boring stuff and then jump into the method that you actually really care about. Just to recap, I wanted to show you my xDebug settings again and reemphasize this remote auto start setting, which I think will make your debugging a little bit more pleasant and you won't have to worry about configuration as much. 